I've spent over 10,000 hours and closed over 600 real estate deals, so I can now bring you the top 10 lead generation strategies that's gonna take your business to the next level. I also wanted to be sure I knew exactly what I was talking about before I made this video, so I just spent the last six months speaking to all the leading experts in each one of these 10 lead generation fields to see how these masters generate their leads and close their deals. Guys, I made $510,000 last year and on track to hit $750,000 this year. Why am I telling you this? It's not to brag, it's to show you guys I actually know what I'm talking about. Never take advice from somebody that's making less money than you. So if you're making over half a million dollars a year right now, you can click off this video, this is not for you. But if you're not already a millionaire real estate agent and you want to be in my position, then sit back and listen and I'm going to show you exactly how I do my top 10 lead generation strategies. The first lead generation method is my MLS rental strategy, which I sometimes refer to as any broker advertised yes. For this strategy, you're going to take private listings from the MLS and you're going to post them on Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist. In my MLS, I have a section in there that says I'm allowed to advertise it. It says any broker advertised yes, but if you don't have that in your MLS, that's okay. All you have to do is ask for permission from the listing agent to list their property to try and bring them a tenant. This works incredibly well at bringing in hundreds of leads per day as long as you post at least 50 listings, preferably a little bit more. On average, you're going to make about $2,000 per deal and it's only going to take you about two to four hours for each deal. So this method is all about high value and you should be able to close up to 30 deals per month doing this. So do the math, that's $60,000. Once you post the listing on Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist, tenants are going to reach out to you and ask you to set up a show. Then all you do from here is set the showing up with the tenant, with the listing agent and go and show the property to try and close that deal. Also set them up directly on your MLS. This way it's a backup just in case the property that you're showing doesn't actually work out. The goal here is to get a rental client out of this and guess what? Renters then turn into buyers. So aside from getting half a month's rent commission from all the renters that you're going to be working with now, these renters midway through might turn into buyers and change their mind and want to buy a house instead of rent. Even if they don't change their mind and want to buy now, you'll still get the rental deal and then eventually later on they're going to use you to buy a house. Okay, so the second lead generation strategy is the apartment locator strategy. So this is going to be similar to the first rental strategy that I just talked about, except you're finding these properties on apartments.com, not your MLS. There's going to be a slight twist to this. So instead of asking for permission from the listing agent, you're going to be asking permission from the apartment complex to actually post their listing on Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist to try to bring them a tenant. Apartment complexes love when you do this. It makes their job way easier and you're going to get around $1,500 per person that you bring in. Each deal only takes about one to two hours to complete. This is by far the easiest money you're ever going to make in real estate. So once you get permission from the apartment complex to post the listing on Facebook Marketplace, leads are going to start reaching out to you asking you to set up a showing. Simply set up the showing with the apartment complex and the actual tenant themselves and then just take them to the property and show it to them. At the complex itself, you don't even really have to do the showing. The leasing office worker, they'll do the showing with you or for you if you want. All you have to do is show up and bring them. If they like the apartment complex, Complex, they're going to fill out an application with the leasing office so you have nothing to do with that whatsoever. They're going to do a deposit with the leasing office as well and you're just going to sit back and collect your commission check. Again, this is the easiest money you're ever going to make in real estate. It's honestly a shock to me why every realtor right now is not doing this strategy. Okay, the third strategy is open houses and this is arguably the most popular lead generation strategy out there right now for realtors. The best part about this strategy, just like the first two strategies I shared, you don't actually have to have the listing to get the leads. The goal here is to get leads from the open house that you're going to be holding for the listing agents or somebody in your brokerage, or you can get leads from door knocking as well before the open house begins. Now to make this strategy really effective, you want to do at least two of these per week. If you do anything less, you're not going to get as many leads as you should be to run a successful business. That means every single Saturday and Sunday, you're going to be holding an open house. Preferably, you should be actually doing two on Saturday and two on Sunday to make four total. You're probably wondering, how do I find these open houses? Well, you can reach out to your brokerage and ask all the agents on your team if they have open houses that they will let you sit at or you can go into your MLS and find for sale listings and then just ask the listing agents if you could sit their open houses. Just reach out to the listing agent about a week in advance so they have plenty of notice and they know you're going to be holding their open house on Saturday or Sunday. So you're going to be holding the open house for about three hours. Typically, I like to start them at 11 a.m. and go to about 2 p.m. This gives you plenty of time to go and door knock before and set up all your signs and then if you want to hold the open house after that, you can hold it from 3 p.m. up until 5 or 6 p.m. Now, it's very important to put out a ton of open house signs. You want to put up at least 30 open house signs 
in the areas that are going to lead directly to the house on like the main roads. And then right before you go, just print out some flyers and then go and door knock in the neighborhood to try to get listings out of it as well. Remember, the goal here is to get leads at your open house. So just make sure you download the spec sheet and you know all about the house. So you seem like you know what you're talking about. And then you can go and take all of those buyers that come over there and then set them up in your MLS and try to show them other properties. Now, listen, yes, it would be fantastic if you can sell that house you're sitting at right now, but typically that's not going to happen. So you're going to want to set them up in your MLS to show them more properties later. Just make sure the house is clean and you have a sign up sheet so you can collect everybody's information so you can reach out to them later. Doing this strategy, you could make hundreds of thousands of dollars every single year. And eventually you can hire team members under you and they can set your open houses for you. Next up at number four is expired listings. This is a very popular lead generation strategy and this requires you to cold call expired listings and try to get them to relist with you. So if you don't like the idea of cold calling random strangers, this strategy might not be for you. However, if you like doing this, you could easily make half a million dollars a year by calling expireds. Okay, so to start this strategy, you go into your MLS or even like Zillow or Realtor.com and you go and look for expired or canceled listings. You can also use websites out there like RedX.com. That actually does all the calling for you for expired listings and that is widely popular. Using a dollar system like that will make it a thousand times easier so you can do more calls per hour. Press one to continue. Right. So I press one and it will call my first lead, Allie. This is Allie. Hey Allie, this is Chad. I'm just calling with the storm dialer. Okay, thank you. Great, thanks. There are guys out there like Ricky Carruth that are experts at this and they make a killing at doing expired listings. I personally think this is an amazing strategy to use right now because the market is prime for expired listings. All of these sellers have put their properties up and they're not getting the price that they want. So the property ends up expiring or canceling, giving you an opportunity to swoop in and get that listing. The goal here is to try and convince them to schedule a listing appointment so you can go and pitch yourself to them so you can take that listing and put it back up on the market and actually sell it for them this time. Now, listen, even if you don't get a listing appointment out of this, just get their contact info, try to get their email address so you can market to them later and do follow-ups. This way, even if they don't want to sell now, they might use you later to sell then. You should sit there for about four hours every single day and just dial, dial, dial until you build up a big enough network where eventually you're going to be able to hire team members to help you do the calls for you and you just go on the listing appointments. Okay, so lead generation strategy number five is going to be FISBOs or for sale by owner. This is somewhat similar to the expired method that I just talked about, but it's going to be slightly different. So in this case, the owner didn't want to use a realtor to list their house and they thought that they could do it on their own. Now there's a multitude of reasons why an owner will do this, mainly because they're cheap and they don't want to pay the realtor commissions. Even though nine out of 10 times, they're going to pay lawyer fees and eventually they'll probably have to pay a buyer's agent anyways. So the ultimate goal here is to call these FISBOs, the for sale by owners, and try to convince them to actually list their house with you instead of doing it on their own themselves. Now again, you could use websites like Red X and no guys, I'm not sponsored. It's just a really good website to use to make these calls for you. So you can dial more per hour. If you don't want to pay for a website to do it for you, you could actually go on Zillow, Realtor.com, Trulia.com, and you can go and find all the for sale by owners and call them yourselves. And you're probably wondering, what do I say to them on the phone if I actually get them on the phone? Well, it's going to be tough trying to convince a person that you've never met before to sell their house with you when they're cheap and they don't want to pay a real estate commission. So a great strategy to use here is actually tell them that you have a buyer interested in their house and you want to set up a showing. Set the showing up and then when you're there, just say you're taking a video doing like a virtual showing for a buyer. This way you don't actually have to bring somebody with. At the house, just be really friendly and very knowledgeable. Know everything about their house, know everything about the area and the market that's going on right now. This way you can try to convince them to list their house with you if they don't get any offers that they like within the next couple weeks. Now this method is really good because you've just met them in person. You sound like an expert. You know what you're talking about and then maybe over in the next couple weeks, they couldn't sell the house. So guess who they're going to call, especially if you follow up with them. They're going to call you and you're going to get a listing out of it. This method is actually really fun as well because you get to go and tour a whole bunch of houses and you get to go and make relationships with a lot of sellers and eventually they're going to get fed up that they can't sell their house. So you're going to end up selling their house for them. Okay. Number six is becoming a premier agent. Did you guys know that you can actually pay to get leads on Zillow, Realtor.com, Trulia and become a premier agent, which is basically going to take your contact information and put 
put it up on the side of the screen for another listing agent's listing. You get to pick a certain zip code or multiple zip codes that you want to market to, and then you pay a set amount of money every single month to get a certain amount of leads coming in. Now, this is not going to be cheap. This is going to cost you thousands of dollars per month if you want enough leads to run a successful business. So it's a little bit different than all the methods I just previously talked about, which were all free. You're basically paying for advertising space on big websites like Zillow, Realtor.com, and this way you're going to actually pay for your leads. So sometimes when a buyer clicks on that listing, they're going to see your information and your name, and they're going to call you instead of the listing agent. Now, this is where the magic actually happens because you immediately want to go and show them that property. The goal is to build a relationship with that person. Obviously, make sure they don't have a realtor and then go and meet them at the house and be very friendly and very knowledgeable. You guys can see a theme going on here. For all these lead generation methods, you got to be the expert and you got to make a friend out of this. So then take them to the house. And when you're at the house with them, obviously talk about the house that you're trying to sell right now, but you're also going to want to set them up directly on your MLS so you can start showing them other properties as well. Now, all of a sudden, you just got a buyer out of this from a single phone call because you're going out of your way. You're showing a property immediately, which is showing this potential client that you're not lazy, you're available whenever they want, and you're the expert. A lot of agents that do Premier Agent will not do this strategy. They're going to strike up a conversation on the phone and kind of dilly-dally around. I want your pre-approval, this and that. Don't do that. Be proactive. Meet them at the house. Do the showing and then set them up in your MLS. Okay, so the seventh lead generation strategy is going to be social media. Using social media in this day and age can be an incredibly powerful tool to generate leads. What you want to do is create specific content for each platform. Yes, you can repurpose content for all of the platforms, but it's not going to be as effective. You want to use unique strategies for each one of these coming up platforms. Facebook is more effective for running targeted ads, hosting virtual houses via Facebook Live, and sharing listings in local community groups. Now, Instagram is great for showcasing property photos, offering virtual tours through Instagram Live or Stories, and building a visual brand presence. YouTube is going to be great for posting actual house tours, which are going to target your local audience and make buyers reach out to you because they're seeing really luxurious houses and it looks like you know what you're talking about and looks like you're getting a lot of listings. LinkedIn is really good for business to business relationships so you can network with other real estate professionals so you can try and get referrals. Twitter is going to be useful for sharing market updates and engaging in real estate conversations. Pinterest can also be used to share home decor ideas, staging tips, and property photos. Just make sure your profile is set up on all the platforms correctly. You want to have your contact information. You want to have a professional photo and you want to make sure your content is very engaging. You're going to want to have your links to your professional website and you want to share testimonials of previous success stories. You have to engage with your audience and this means responding to all the comments, all of your DMs, everything imaginable that you can respond back to people, do it in a timely manner. You're also going to want to comment, like, and share posts from other real estate professionals in your area as well so all of these potential leads start seeing that you're involved in the real estate community. Now, this is all organic, but you can eventually start doing paid advertisements, which is going to target specific demographics in whatever area that you choose to try and actually get buyers from paying for advertisements on Instagram or Facebook or even Google. Just make sure to have a funnel and you can collect people's email addresses so you can retarget to them later and you can follow up with them. Remember, the key to social media marketing is professionalism, engagement, and creativity, and you must stay consistent. When doing social media marketing, you want to stand out. You want to create a lot of noise and you want to sound like you're the expert in the area so you get leads reaching out to you that want you to help them buy or sell homes. Number eight is going to be using mailers to farm. I'm sure you've all heard about farming specific areas before, and this works really well once you use a mailer system, which is really going to take a limited amount of time. The goal of this strategy is to send out monthly mailers to a specific community that you want to farm. You want to become the face of that community, and you want to be the go-to realtor for everybody in that area. Use public records, local county data, or title companies to build your list of addresses. Consider purchasing lists and reputable providers who cater to your specific demographics, as well as partnering up with local lenders or title companies that will actually split the advertising costs with you or pay for it all. Okay, for your actual mailers, you want to make sure they are extremely eye-catching and creative. Now, this can be anything from postcards to flyers to letters to newsletters. If you're using postcards, make sure they're easily accessible so the recipient doesn't have to open up an envelope. For letters, you want to make sure they're really personable, so you want to customize them for each person. Newsletters will share market updates, recent sales, and other valuable information about the houses in their area. And then flyers are going to showcase high quality photos of recently sold or recently listed properties. Also, don't forget to include special offers or incentives on your mailers. Offer a free consultation, staging advice, or even market reports. You could also partner up with local businesses and get coupons that you could attach to your mailers. Just make sure to provide 
provide multiple ways for them to actually contact you, like your phone number, your email address, your social media handles, everything like that. Now, once you do this for long enough, because this is a longer term strategy, you're going to become the face of that neighborhood and everybody is going to start referring you out to all of their neighbors once you start selling homes. And once you start getting listings, you're going to be putting up open house signs and for sale signs, which is going to have your face and your contact information over it. So all the neighbors driving home every single day, they're going to see you and know that you're the expert in that community. You could build a multi-million dollar a year business just by using Mailer. I've talked to a ton of experts that exclusively do this and they've taken their business to the next level once they got consistent and started sending out eye-catching mailers every single month. Okay, number nine is door knocking. Now, this is one of the most old school methods, but it can be very powerful for a face-to-face -face conversation to start generating leads. You're going to want to focus on neighborhoods where homes are likely to sell soon or where neighborhoods that you just listed a house. Understand the demographic. Are they older homeowners looking to downsize? Are they young families likely to upgrade? Just make sure when you're going door knocking, you have your business cards, you have your market updates, you have your flyers that you can hand out to all the homeowners. On these flyers, you could have market updates, you could have recent successes, you could have upcoming listings, anything imaginable that's going to make you look better, put them on your flyers. First impressions matter, so make sure that you present yourself as the professional. Dress to impress, and when you go there, talk in a very professional language. Don't overcomplicate things and use big words, but you're going to want to sound like the expert in that area, so definitely use real estate lingo. I'm sure you've all heard about elevator pitches before. Well, this is very important because you want to capture their attention and you don't have much time before they slam the door in your face. And if they're telling you that, no, I don't have time right now, just make sure to respect their time. They'll appreciate that. This way you can leave your contact information with them or potentially get their phone number and try to follow up with them later. Or you could even go back to the house in a couple weeks. Now, if somebody does express an interest that they want to sell their house, you want to listen to their needs. Understand their motivation for wanting to sell their house. They might have concerns. They might have specific things that they want answered. So just listen to them and don't make it all about yourself. Definitely avoid being pushy. You do not want to push too hard and then get a bad reputation in that neighborhood because guess what? All the neighbors talk to each other. If someone is interested but unsure, you can offer them a free home evaluation or a consultation to gain their trust by giving them some immediate value. And then you're going to want to provide insights into market trends or potential home improvements that they can use to increase their value. After each visit, just make sure you jot down notes so you can go and follow up later and you're going to remember exactly what they said so you can have that personal relationship. Those small details that you pay attention to and write down, that will matter because guess what? Your competition probably is not doing that. And then just make sure you follow up. It could be through a phone call, an email, a text message, or go back to the house a couple weeks later. Like all lead generation methods, consistency is key. So just make sure you stick to this. You allot a few hours every single day just to do your door knocking and make sure you build a presence in each neighborhood you're going to be door knocking in because then you'll build trust with the community. All right, on to number 10, which is leveraging local businesses. Local businesses can provide valuable networking opportunities and provide a base for you to actually get referrals. Get to know local businesses and build a genuine relationship with them. Attend local business networking events, chamber of commerce meetings, or other local professional groups so you can start getting your name and your face out there. Partner with businesses to offer exclusive deals for your clients. For instance, you could provide new homeowners with discount coupons for local furniture stores, cafes, or home improvement shops. Also, you can leave your business card at the front desk of local businesses. And this way, you can tell them that you're going to refer all of your clients to their business if they allow you to do this. You're going to want to collaborate with local businesses to hold events. This could be a neighborhood barbecue, a home improvement workshop at a local hardware store, or an art show at a local gallery. Some cafes or local shops might even allow you to set up a small booth or table periodically. And then you can offer free home evaluations. You can offer market updates or just use it as an opportunity to introduce yourself to local patrons. You could also consider sponsoring local events or sports teams or even community fairs. Some businesses might allow you to advertise in their premise or in their newsletters in exchange for a fee for mutual advertising. You're going to want to partner with businesses to provide content that's going to be mutually beneficial for you and the local business. This could be blog posts, videos, social media contents. For instance, if you create a video tour of a local cafe with the owner and tie it to the appeal of that neighborhood, it could be for potential home buyers. You could also offer workshops by partnering up with local businesses so they can actually provide a workshop for all of their clients that regularly come into their store. So you can offer things like market updates, tips on buying your first 
first home, where you think the market's gonna be in the next year or so, how they should actually list their house. And then you're just gonna wanna use local businesses for all of your real estate needs. So for an example, if you need to print up flyers, well, go down to your local printer shop and actually use them to print all your flyers. This way you can build a relationship with them. By partnering up with local businesses for all the strategies I just mentioned, you're gonna become a part of the community and everybody's gonna know you as the local real estate agent and they're gonna come and use you to buy and sell. All right, guys, using all of these strategies are gonna provide you with tremendous results and it's gonna take your business to the next level. You're gonna pick one of these niches and you're gonna spend all of your time and effort on just this one lead generation strategy. So what you're gonna wanna do is study this video and make a list of all the top 10 lead generation strategies that I just went over. And then you're gonna put them in order of favorite to least favorite. This way you can now go and start trying your favorite lead generation methods and see which one you like best. Because remember, you're gonna be devoting all of your time and effort into one of these things only. So you have to make sure that you really love doing it and that you're really good at it. Aside from picking the one niche that you're gonna focus all of your efforts on, you also have to do the other two lead generation methods that are gonna be a mandatory. So that is basically gonna be networking. So anytime that you're out in public, you're always networking and telling people that you're a real estate agent, that you wanna buy or sell a house for them. And then it's always gonna be your sphere of influence. You always have to stay in touch with everybody that you know that's in your database by sending out a weekly CRM email. Now, like I said, those are not negotiables. All the while you're doing this, you're also gonna start getting referrals from other agents and from previous clients that you've worked with that just referred you to their friends and families. Doing all this is gonna net you a massive amount of money every single year. You can be like me and make over half a million dollars a year as a brand new real estate agent. Guys, I've only been doing this for about three and a half years and I'm making a tremendous amount of money doing everything that I just told you. I picked one niche, I focused on that, it was rentals for me. I did my other two side niches, which is mandatory, and now I'm getting tons of business left and right and I'm just growing every single year. I hope you guys really like this video. I just put a tremendous amount of time and effort into making this for you guys so you can succeed at the highest level just like me. If you guys like the video, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, drop a comment below on your favorite lead generation method, hit the like button, and I'll catch everybody in the next one. All right, that was pretty damn good. Not bad.